Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Andres, and today I'm going to show you how to build the FT Goblin. And we have everything you need for this plane linked in the description below, uh, including the speed build kit, electronics, and free plans if you want to scratch build it. Let's start with our wing pieces. First, we're going to remove this relief from the back of the wing. Now let's take this piece, do a C-fold. A C-fold is like a clamshell where one side of the foam folds over 180 degrees to meet the other side. Glue it over like so. Hold this for about 45 seconds for it to dry. Next, let's crack open the wings down the middle and do a double bevel on the leading edge. Cut these bevels at a 45 degree angle, making sure not to go through the other side of the paper. If you do cut through the paper, don't worry, just tape it back up on the other side. Let's also do a 45 degree single bevel on our Elevon hinge. Now let's put a bead of hot glue down the hinge to reinforce it and take a scrap piece of foam and squeeze away as much of that glue as possible. Make sure that your aileron hinge is open for at least a minute for it to dry, otherwise you might seal your aileron shut. Next, take the pointy end of a barbecue skewer and just run it lightly through these three score cuts right here. That'll help us fold the wing over and maintain a good shape. Let's go ahead and fold the wing over. And it should crease right along those three seams. We can also just pop this tab out for the servo. Now let's set this piece aside and work on our spar. To make sure that this is the right spar, uh, make sure that your score cuts are facing upwards and lay it right over the wing, uh, lining up this notch with the servo hole. And if this angle uh, matches flush right here, that's the right spar. So let's go ahead and remove this center tab from our spar. If you score through these channels again with a razor blade, make sure you don't go through the paper on the other side. So now let's fold the spar over, supply glue to one side, and do a C-fold. Let this dry for about 45 seconds. Now let's line up our spar on the wing, making sure to line up this notch with the notch in the wing. Let's go ahead and glue it in. As you're gluing the spar down, move it around a little bit to spread the glue out evenly. Let the spar dry for about 45 seconds. Now let's grab a servo. Go ahead and center up your servo with a little servo centering tool and put the servo arm on. Also, make sure you install the servo screw right now because it will be harder to get to later. If you don't know how to send your servos, we have a link down below to show you how to do that. For this build, I'm using the 9 gram servos. You can use the smaller 4.3 gram servos, but these will just give you a little bit more peace of mind. And install your servo arm just as normal, 90 degrees from the servo. Now, rotate the arm so that it's parallel. To install our servo, let's take the servo wire first and thread it through the back end of the servo hole. So as you can see, looking on the inside of the wing, It'll come out on the Elevon side. Let's test for our servo. Just press it down into the notch. And it should sit flush with the top of the wing. As you can see, the servo arm will be pointing towards the front of the wing. Uh, this will just give you a bit more of a direct linkage to the Elevon, but it's okay if you do the other way as well. Just make sure that the base of the servo is pointing towards the center of the wing. Now that we've test fitted our servo, let's go ahead and glue it in. For each of these steps, the hot glue will take about 45 seconds to dry. Uh, but if it does take more for a certain step, we'll let you know. Now let's take a piece of tape and tape down our servo wire on the top of the wing. This will keep it out of the way as we fold the wing over. Now we can fold over our wing, but before we glue it down, let's do a test fit. Now as you do this, make sure that the spar is sitting flush with the top and the bottom surface of the wing. And this uh, trailing edge of the bottom surface is contacting right here in front of the Elevon hinge nicely. To glue this down, Let's apply glue to the leading edge, the underside of the spar, and the trailing edge tab. Give this about a minute to a minute and a half to dry. Now we can repeat the same process on the other wing. Next, let's join our wings together. But first, we're going to take these servo wires and take the tape with them and move them to the bottom of the wing so they don't interfere with the step. Let's flip the wings upside down and take a couple small pieces of tape to just line up the middles like so. Next we can take a piece of packing tape and layer over the center but in front of this servo hole cutout. And now that we have the bottom taped up, let's flip it back upright, crack it open and apply glue on the inner seams. Now while this is drying, we're going to hang the back half off the table so that the servo wires underneath don't interfere with this laying flat on the table. Now we can take the excess packing tape from earlier and fold it over the top.
Cut off the excess so it doesn't cover up the server wire hole. Now we can set the wing outside and move on to the fuselage. To start our fuselage, we'll want to locate these two pieces and remove the foam tabs. Since I'm not removing the airflow shaped pieces yet, because if I do that, it's easier to crush down on the side and crinkle up the foam. Again, make sure not to cut through the other side of the paper. Now I notice in the speedboat kit and our free plans, there's going to be an etch mark right here and right over here on this piece. What we're going to do is take our ruler. Now as you're doing these creases, uh, make sure that if your ruler has cork on the bottom, the cork is facing up. This way, the steel part sits right up flush against the uh, foam and it doesn't crinkle as easily. Now start with this piece and do a B-fold on the sides. A B-fold means that the side plate is going to rock up and meet beside the bottom plate. When we apply glue for a B-fold, let's favor it towards the side of the bottom plate. And as you're doing this, uh, make sure not only to keep this at a 90 degree angle, but also press down uh, so that the B-fold sits nice and flush. Uh, for this piece, you want to hang the back end off the table. Uh, because of this look right here. If you do it on the table, that will uh, crinkle up the foam. All right, now we can also do a B-fold on this back flap here. So fold that over, make sure it meets flush with the other side. And let's go ahead and glue it down. We'll favor glue on the sides of this tab here. And fold that over on the table, using the table as our friend. These tables are friendly. Now let's join these two pieces together. To do this, let's first take our fingers and crush down on these tabs a little bit. Uh, this will just help this seat better onto the other piece. Let's do a test fit. These tabs will seat right into the tabs of the bottom piece. If you're happy with the fit, let's go ahead and apply glue to the top surface, anywhere there's not a tab, and to this bottom piece right here. As you're gluing this piece in, make sure you're not only pressing down, but also in from the sides to make sure that these surfaces are nice and flush. Now let's go ahead and remove the airfoil cutouts from the two top pieces, but not from the two side plates. These side plates will rotate up in a B-fold to meet the other side plates, and we can do a test fit. Make sure it fits well. Now one thing to note, these two surfaces right here will not line up. Uh, they're actually going to be about the width of the foam apart. Uh, this is supposed to happen, so don't worry if it looks like it's not lining up. Now let's apply glue to this side plate. Just all around the wing cutout. Making sure not to go too far forward in the front here. And also to the side of the bottom plate, just as a normal B-folds. Let's rotate this up. Now that it's glued on, we no longer need this uh, wing cutout in place, so we can go ahead and pop this one out too. We can also pop this little duct out right here. Let's repeat the same process on the other side. Now let's grab our motor mount and glue it on. We're going to want to orientate it so that these two holes are uh, facing towards the top of the airframe, so towards the duct. And this little hole right here for our motor wires is facing out the bottom doesn't really matter which side this uh, motor wire hole is on. Wipe off some excess glue here and now we can hold the motor mount against the table so that it ends up nice and flush. Now that it's glued, let's follow up with a piece of packing tape. If your packing tape is covering the uh, wing cutout, go ahead and slice it so that your wing can slide in. Now we can also reinforce the firewall from the back with a bead of hot glue. If your motor has anything sticking out the back, you'll need to cut out this center piece of tape, and you also need to cut out this piece of tape for your motor wires. We can thread our motor wires through and mount our motor. We also need to poke out these four holes here so that our screws can come out from the back of the firewall. So when you're screwing in your motor, make sure that the screws you're using are short enough so that they don't touch the wires inside the motor. If, if they do, this can cause problems and possibly destroy your motor in ESC. So for this build, I'm using an F-Pack size motor, but I'm using a 20 amp BL Heli ESC that has an XT60 connector. 
Uh, this is not the ESC that comes in our current F-Pack, but I'm using this because the larger connector allows me to use a larger battery, which this plane needs to balance out properly. You can also use the ESC that comes with the F-Pack, but you'll need to add some extra weight in the nose to balance it out. If you choose to use this ESC, you will have to solder the motor directly to it because the bullets are not the same size. The ESC will mount just about right here so that the battery connector and the servo lead are uh, coming out this little notch right here. And I'm just going to trim these wires to length and solder these things together. Now let's go ahead and test our motor direction. Now you'll notice I haven't shrunk the heat shrink around these connections yet. Uh, that's because if the motor spins the wrong way, uh, I can still access these connections easily. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, if you're doing it like this, just make sure that as you're testing the motor direction, that these uh, contacts don't touch each other or else you might have a problem. Since this plane is a pusher and I'm using a motor with normal threads, I'm going to need to run a reverse prop. So looking from the back of the plane uh, down the motor, the motor should be going counterclockwise. Right now it's going clockwise looking from the back. Uh, so I need to switch two of these uh, connections. Now that we have the motor going the right direction, we can secure down our ESC. I'm just going to do this with a little bit of double sided tape. Now we're ready to join our wing with the fuselage. So let's flip this right side up and just slide one end right through. Alright, so our Elevon wires are now in the way. Let's go ahead and take the tape off of those. And what we're going to do with these uh, is we're going to tuck them right into this little cavity right here, but making sure that they're still uh, sticking out enough that we can get to them later. If you're having any trouble, just give the fuselage a little rocking motion uh, to slide the wing on. All right, and now we can center up the wing by just looking at the center seam here and lining it up with the center of the fuselage. Now that our wing's in, we can take these servo wires out and plug them into the receiver. One will go into the aileron port and the other will go into the elevator. Now to glue on our wings, we're going to apply a bead of glue to each of the four sides, uh, take a scrap piece of foam and wipe off the excess glue. Let's go ahead and test our elevons to make sure they're going the right direction before we secure our receiver down. Uh, so before we plug it in, let's take a pair of pliers and pull up the servo arms until they're facing uh, upwards. So for this plane, since you're uh, using elevons, which is a mix between elevator and ailerons, uh, you'll need to program elevons in your transmitter. In Spectrum, uh, just go down to System Setup, Aircraft Type, Wing, and then scroll to Elevon. Alright, so to test for our uh, server direction, when you pull up on the elevator, both of them should go forward. Uh, when you push down, they should come backwards. And then when you push uh, left aileron, the left one should go forward and the right one should go backwards. If the server direction is not correct, uh, you can try changing which servo is in which port, or switching to Elevon B on the transmitter, or even uh, reversing the servos in the transmitter as well. Now we can secure our receiver in place. I like to glue it down right about here uh, with the servo wires coming out underneath so that it doesn't obstruct where our battery is going to sit. I'm just going to put a bead of glue on the receiver and glue it down. If your receiver has two antennas or a really long one uh, like this, you can just tuck it into the wing so that it's pointing 90 degrees from the other one. Now we're ready to seal up the bottom of this fuselage and we're just going to need this piece right here. Let's go ahead and remove these foam tabs. There's also an etch line on this piece. We're just going to bend that up slightly, again using our ruler to help keep it in place. Let's test fit this piece on the bottom of our fuselage. So this piece uh, should sit on top of the doublers uh, inside. And this back piece should uh, be flush with the motor mount. So once we're happy with that fit, we can go ahead and apply a bead of glue on the inside of the doublers. And along these pieces right here. Also put a little bit on the back of this piece. You can flip this over onto the table and use the table to keep that nice and flat on the bottom. 
since there is a slight change in the angle of this piece, you can rock the fuselage a little bit forwards and backwards uh, to make sure that all parts of the piece are flush. So let's do our Elvon linkages now because we don't have the tails on yet. Just pop a little thingy in. For this build, I'm gonna use the top hole of the control horn and the middle hole on the servo arm. Before you mark where to bend your push rod, make sure that the Elvon is flush with the back of the wing and that your servo arm is pointing 90 degrees upwards. Uh, bend the push rod 90 degrees first and then do a 90 degree bend to the other side. We can clip this right here. Clamp down on this part and just rotate until the piece is straight. Make sure you thread the Z-bend through the servo arm first before you glue the control horn in. <laughs> now we can reinforce the control horn by applying a bead of glue on either side. Now let's repeat the same process for the other Elevon. Now let's install our vertical stabilizers. The fin will just slide into the tab back here until it meets flush with the airframe. Now we can glue these in place by applying a bead of glue on all four sides and taking a scrap piece of foam and wiping off the excess glue. Do the same thing on the bottom side. To build our nose, we'll need these three pieces here. In the kit, we actually include enough parts to build two noses in case you bust one up. Let's remove the foam tabs from the sides and the back. You can also pop out this little knack duct here. If you're running FPV, you want to cut out this little hole right here that's etched into the foam uh, so that your camera can stick out. If you're not running FPV, don't worry about this step. If the S lines aren't deep enough, you can trace it again with a razor blade. Now let's remove the paper from these etch lines forward. We're also going to peel off the paper uh, from in front of the etch line on these two doubler pieces. So let's go ahead and do a fold over on this paper flap. Just apply a bead of glue and fold it over with a scrap piece of foam. Hold that at 90 degrees for a few seconds and then go all the rest of the way. Now we're going to give each of these pieces a bit of a bend to match the curvature of the nose. When this folds up, this curve will have to match this curve. Same thing on the other side and on the front of the doublers. To line up our doublers, uh, just line up this edge with the etch line on the foam. Also line up the back of the uh, piece without paper with the etch line up here. You can apply a bead of glue to the back of the doubler and glue it down. And do the same thing on the other side. Let's do a B fold on the nose as indicated. The side plate rotates up to sit beside the bottom plate. Just apply glue to the uh, part covered with paper for now and rotate that up. And do the same thing on the other side. Now let's test fit this piece by putting the nose on the table and rolling it over, making sure that the uh, top is tight. And if it is, this should line up flush at the back. Now keep in mind, when you do glue this, uh, you're going to want to have one hand back here to support the uh, rear end of the nose, and one hand up here pushing in the side plates uh, to keep them flush with the internal structure. We're going to put a bead of glue in this seam right here, a bead of glue around each of the doublers, and glue on the side of these pieces. Let's repeat the same motion as before, keeping the flap tight against the uh, top of the nose and pushing in the sides up front to keep them flush. Hold this here for about a minute and a half to dry. Now let's cut off the excess paper from the nose. I'm going to do this with a razor blade, but you can do this with scissors as well. And do the same thing on the other side. If you've cut the hole out for your FPV camera, you may need to remove the foam around it since it has collapsed in a little bit due to the curvature of the nose. Crunch down this foam a little bit in the front so that it doesn't get caught up on the side plates. In our speed build kit, we have a plywood camera mount included. Now first, we're going to glue this piece onto the front of our nose. Uh, one thing to note, if you're using a large camera, you want to have the large hole pointing upwards 
If you're using a smaller camera, like the Runcam Micro, uh, you want to have the smaller hole pointing upwards. If you're using the Runcam Mini, use the included adapter so that it's the same form factor as the standard size cameras. Give that about a minute to dry. And just like our firewall, we're going to reinforce this with packing tape. So since we're using a larger camera, we're going to use these uh, vertically orientated notches on the outside rather than the inside. If you're using the micro cameras, uh, use the inside ones. Let's go ahead and open these slots up just by cutting through the tape. You'll also need to do this for the bottom slot on the outside. Put our side pieces in. We want to orientate them this way so that the hole is pointing upwards. Put it in the notch and push upwards. If you do this right, it should be flush on both the top and the bottom. Since I'm using the bigger camera, I'm going to need to use the smaller support pieces to keep the same shape. Uh, if you're using the Runcam micro size camera, uh, you'll need to use the larger supports. Put it in the back plate first, and then slide it towards the side plate until it notches in. And do the same thing on the other side. So the side plates have uh, a few holes in them so that you can change your mounting position of the camera so that just enough of your lens sticks out of the nose. You can play around with that and get the right fit. Now that we have our camera screwed in, we can do a quick test fit to make sure that the lens uh, fits well in the nose. And there we go. That should be enough clearance to uh, see without being obstructed by the nose. Also, far back enough to where we hit something, it's not the first thing it hits. Now, even though these uh, pieces notch together, it's good to add a bit of glue for extra security. Uh, you can use CA since it's wood to wood, but since some of these pieces are wood to tape, I'm just going to use hot glue for the whole thing. So just put a bit of hot glue around all the seams. Again, if you're doing FPV, you can just mount your video transmitter anywhere here. I'm going to put a piece of Velcro right in the battery bay so we can secure our battery down. Again, since I'm using a normal threaded motor, I'll need to use a reverse prop, which means looking from the front of the prop, it spins clockwise. So this plane will use a pretty wide range of batteries. As long as you can fit it in the battery bay and it balances well, you'll be fine. Right now I'm using a Hyperion 3-cell 2200. Uh, let me slide the nose on and check the CG. You'll see on the bottom of the wings, there's uh, two little dots of where the CG should be. All right, that balances pretty well. So now that we have our battery in, uh, CG tested, we have our prop on, we're ready to go fly. So for a launch, uh, I like to do a wingtip launch on this one so that you don't have any risk of your uh, hand getting cut up by the propeller. If you've ever flown the uh, FT Arrow, it's pretty similar to that. Uh, it also doesn't stall, so as you can see, I'm just going to bring it up here. That's full back elevator and uh, no throttle. And I'm tipping the wings by myself, maintain full control, no stalling, no tip stalling. So it handles really well. Uh, it's just bank and yank it like a wing. And it can pretty much carry any battery you throw in it as long as it balances out. So depending on how you fly the thing, you could have 10, 20 minutes of flight time just off of a uh, normal LiPo battery. Also check out the Strix Goblin and Nano Goblin that this FT Goblin was inspired by. It's been great working with ReadyMade RC and Strix on this project, and uh, I'm really glad to have a foam board version of the Goblin, which is such a nice flying plane, uh, available to you guys to build, to fly, have fun with. Thanks for watching the FT Goblin build video. We're actually trying some new approaches to our build videos, so let us know down in the comments how you like this one. Go check out our other plans, our other videos, and we'll see you next time.